the Red Cross have been, has been, they've been so wonderful. The, these Red Cross volunteers, I tell you, they, be, besides the firefighters, um, man, these people are gems. The, the fire that we have going on right now is called the Cameron Fire, and it is huge. It's one of the biggest fires in all of Colorado's history, and it's burning and burning and burning. I don't know how many acres. Uh, we heard yesterday that the fire um, got, they're all camped out at Eden Valley. I mean, literally, the firefighters are for Eden Valley. And, you know, I, I know already. <laughs> This is just me walking confidently in the Lord that God's not going to do anything with Eden Valley except protect it um, because it, it is a, a, a place where miracles are still happening. The Holy Spirit is just so on fire in this place and it, it's, a, it's a special gem and we've got people from all over the world actually praying for Eden Valley. So, you know, with that said, you have all these prayers, and then, you know, you've got the hand of God that is just holding back the fire. So what actually ended up happening is the fires actually came up, came up onto the bus of one of my friends, and the backside of Ignacio's uh, house, and, and the firefighters were out there, and this is the story that I heard, the firefighters were out there, fighting the flames, fighting the flames, and they were right there. And, and right after Ignacio's house and after the bus is my place, where I'm living. Um, that it's, I'm right in line. And um, this is God. So here the firefighters are out there fighting, and all of a sudden the wind came. I say the breath of God came and blew the fires in the other direction. I mean, this is just incredible. Every time, every time... And I've got footage of how the Lord blew the, the smoke out of Eden Valley um, a couple days beforehand, away from Eden Valley. I've got footage of it. After I had prayed, I watched it with my own eyes. It is amazing what God does to Eden, with Eden Valley and the blessings there. Yeah, I just, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. And then after that, another, yet another fire uh, ignited on Pancake Ridge where I just was the other day filming. And on Pancake Ridge, it came down and it was, um, and there's actually a barn full of dry straw and there's um, uh, wood, a lot of uh, cut firewood. That thing could have went up and just ignited and really played havoc on that whole corner of Eden Valley. And it could have just, uh, that could have been it, the match, the, the match box waiting to be lit. And it came down pancake, and the, the firefighters couldn't get to it because of the train. And just before it got to that barn, it rained. <laughs> oh, hello, it rained. So that was amazing. God with his amazing hands. It's as if God is standing guard with his ministering angel saying, you're not touching this property. So, but um, one of the things that has been very difficult, obviously, is being at the hotel, and 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 we're not um, we're not um, all together in fellowship, uh, so there's a lot of fragmentation. For the group here, group there, group there, and we I feel the the pulling of uh, of Satan working. Um, I, I I do I, I feel it, and it's a strain. But the thing that I have experienced since coming here and praying mightily with with you know my roommate here and then with my other friend uh, Luna, the Holy Spirit, holy moly, can I tell you stories about what I've seen so far after our prayers and the ministering that's going on and the 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 revelations that the Lord is um, showing. Um, me and some of my other friends who are seeking, seeking. So you see that guy right over there with the, with the um, right across there. See this guy right there who's waiting for the, this guy. I saw him the other day in the, in the, um, in the elevator that he's going in. And there was an encounter there which was so so powerful um, and I knew that the Lord was going to do something with this fellow now get this so the day before me and my friend Luna we were praying and Luna has been feeling like she's not being used as a ministering tool and I said Luna you have some really special gifts the Lord is going to bring you those special people well that guy that I was just zooming in on when I left to go meet her to go hiking she was out there witnessing to him and it blew me away because 
that guy was perfectly placed for her. He's very unique, uh, very well researched, very um, the the in depthness of what he knows about um, religion and faith, and, and um, but not there with believing that uh, God is the one the true God. Um, kind of has a different uh, belief system, and you know here is Luna witnessing to him in such a beautiful way, finding common ground where somebody would have just walked past this guy. And I knew when I had an encounter with him in the elevator that day, you know, we just were going up the floors and he talked, I talked to him briefly, he talked to me, and, um, and then later on in the day, and then get this, and then during the evening, I was always done because I need to know where people are talking to you, they're correct. Why, why can't we even admit that it's possible that Yeshua was a part of a larger family? And yeah, he was the only one at that time. You can't have more than one. Why would there be more But that doesn't mean that his brothers and sisters didn't listen to him. Maybe, maybe he was the incarnation, not only of the Most High, but as a specific personality of the time of Judah, which could be called an archangel. And maybe his brothers and sisters may or may not have been various other incarnations of archangels that weren't anointed with the crown of the Christ during that incarnation. But that doesn't mean they hadn't been before, or they wouldn't have been in the future. Or it doesn't mean it does. Because it doesn't make me saying it crazy or relevant at all. Right now. But maybe. <laughs> well, I do believe that it's good to keep your mind open yeah, so that the truth can enter. I promise um, I don't think like this. It's much nicer inside than it is when I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how are we supposed to know anything if we don't question it? But I also follow that up with lots of research and, and searching and seeking. And he does say, if you see me, I'm going to give it to you. That's I'm right. going to fill you up to overflowing. He's got to be so I just well. looking as many me. obnoxious details about the universe yeah, as yeah. you want. And that's right. And, and, and I want it all. I want it all. <laughs> all. What we, what we need. What? We only yeah, need yeah. to know one thing, apparently. <laughs> and everything else we take from it. If we know that one part, of the all. But, you know, this is the thing. Everybody thinks like we have to have special gifts or we have to maybe be steeped in biblical knowledge uh, to be able to witness to people. And, um, and you know, we don't. We don't. God can use it at, at, at any time for any purpose. And he will bring the people that we need to us to witness to. He will bring them. We don't have to go door to door. We don't have to do any of that stuff. We don't have to go to seminary. It's amazing. And then get this, and then during the evening, I was leaving and I met him downstairs. I met him down there and I said, you know what happened between you and Luna was beautiful. And, and we elaborated on that so much. And we found common ground. Um, and I said, you know, Satan is working to separate us. And he's like, I get that. He's like, we really do, we really are brothers and sisters. And, and we both had, like, I call them holy, holy spirit goosebumps. <laughs> and it was beautiful. So things like that are happening. Encounters like that are happening. But you have to be open to the spirit. And you have to be um, not just open to the spirit, but, but willing. And uh, we're seeing the work even am amongst all of this stuff. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And... And, um, oh, and all the doggies and all the doggies. But anyway, I'm going to go eat breakfast. And today is a volunteer work day. We are going to a church or a school to uh, do some landscaping and clean some things up. I'm excited about that. Um, so they're, they're, they're trying to get us back into the groove of feeling normal. Um, but we don't know when we're going back to Eden Valley. We don't know uh, what we're going to find when we get there. But um, praise the Lord that it has not been touched and the fires have not breached a God's protective circle around it. And I'm just, I'm just praising him every day, praising him that I'm here and I've got a place to stay and that, um, you know what? Um, oh, and we're praying and, and continue to pray for the firefighters because these guys are, they're doing an incredible job. An incredible, incredible job. But at the end here, you'll see my conversation with, if I can post it, with the firefighter. And I knew when he was talking that Eden Valley is a blessed place. And you can see, you can see why. 
just by the things that he's saying. All right, my friends, thank you all for the prayers. We continue to pray for all the other people that um, have been evacuated, who have lost homes, other people in other states who are, who are, who are living through this. And um, I don't know what caused the fires. I don't know if there's people out there setting fires. If this is this is the nature also, and and just, but you know we are we are living in a time when God told us this is going to get worse. And I hope this shaking of the ground is actually waking people up to see the hand of God and the power of um, His sovereignty and His mercy and His grace, and how even now. He can still bring people together.